All right, Bob, thank you. 731. The accused Idaho murder suspect made his first court appearance after being arrested in the Poconos on Friday. 28-year-old Brian Koberger was under heavy security at the Monroe County Courthouse where he was ordered back to Idaho within 10 days. His parents and two sisters, they were also inside the courtroom. Koberger charged with four counts of first-degree murder. Now, the same day he was in court, new video was released from the Indiana State Police, and it shows Koberger and his father during a traffic stop as they made a cross-country trek from Washington State to the Poconos. They were pulled over December 15th for tailgating, but were let go with a citation. No information available to arrest Koberger. Now, Koberger is accused of murdering 20-year-old Zanner Kernodal, 21-year-old Maddie Mogan, 21-year-old Kaylee Consalvis, and 20-year-old Ethan Shapin. So we have attorney Joseph Marone here uh, joining us now. And it's important to note that the whole extradition, that was a formality, wasn't it? Yeah, that was more of a formality mm -hmm. because there was the, the charges are out of Idaho. He was arrested in Pennsylvania, so you have to come before the Pennsylvania authorities. The only issue at hand is whether or not it's actually Brian Koberger, and obviously it was. So he's not going to fight it. Waiving it is his best interest to get him back to Idaho so he can address the charges, which are currently uh, outstanding and sealed at this point. So we'll see. Let's uh, rewind just a little bit before we get to uh, the court appearance there. This was all, I mean, the power of DNA. Yeah, this is an interesting case because usually there's a law enforcement database with your DNA that you, usually it's not on it if you're not, if you weren't in the system. In this yeah. case, they went to a public genealogy database, which is where these ancestry type websites exist and when you voluntarily upload your DNA and they were able to get DNA at the scene and they ran it through these databases, which is something new. And they were, that's where they were able to make the match. And that was their initial big piece of evidence that connected them to, to this fellow, Brian Koberger. And then there was a matter of the car, the yeah. white Hyundai Elantra. Um, and it's so interesting now, especially now that we have a, a body cam footage of him in that car. Well, that was just to verify that, that was his car. Right. I mean, they had footage way back at, at the crime scene in that area. It was a college town, a lot of bars and restaurants. They had his car near the, near the apartment where the, where the murder took place. So obviously that was one of the beginning pieces of evidence. So that's another piece of evidence they're trying to connect to ultimately, you know, put a strong case together against this fellow. And once again, as you noted, waiving extradition, I mean, that's really to speed up the process to see what's in that affidavit. How do you even begin to mount a defense? I guess you wait to see what's uncovered. Yeah, I mean, the affidavit's sealed. So when it's unsealed, once he faces the charges and he's arraigned, you'll get to see really where law enforcement is with their case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but it's, it's as much as, listen, DNA is very powerful. We all know that. It's, it's very hard to overcome. But what's the source of this DNA? I'm sure he's going to have experts to fight the case. Just because, he, I mean, he went to school not 10 miles away from where sure. the, the crime scene was. So being in the area is not, not really unusual. Mm -hmm. Even though, obviously, I'm sure there's a lot more. There's going to be a whole digital forensics platform with his cell phone and information. And they're connecting the towers and where his phone was at the time. Mm -hmm. So all that will come into play as this case unravels. So I'm sure the law enforcement is, is, is mounting a pretty strong case. But again, you know, you're presumed innocent and, uh, you know, that's where the, where the system sure. takes you. What kind of time do you think you could see with the four um, counts of first degree murder? Well, it's a capital case and I'm mm -hmm. sure they're going to seek the death penalty. Mm -hmm. So it's a very serious case. And besides that, he's charged with burglary. But uh, if he is convicted, they, they will seek the death penalty. So he's got, uh, he's got his work cut out for him. Bes besides the potential evidence in this case, I mean, as far as the law, en law enforcement having a sit-down interview, I mean, at this point, he's, he's not speaking. So no. where, where do you go in this case with trying to get a motive or trying to get a confession? I don't. I think he's going to fight the case. I mean, remember the the government has the presumption, sure. you know, and uh, they have to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. First of all, like I said, they have to connect this DNA, right, and the source of the DNA. They have to have other evidence because there's there's really no motive in the case. He has no connection with with these students whatsoever. Um, they have no murder weapon because there was a knife used. Um, so have they, and I'm sure they have search warrants. They went through the parents' house, his apartment back in Washington. They're looking high and low for the murder weapon. They haven't been able to connect them. So, you know, I don't know. We won't know how strong the case is until he gets back to Idaho and they begin to unseal this probable cause affidavit and start to show their case. And I'm sure he's going to mount a strong defense. The family's indicated that, you know, they're going to use whatever resources they have to defend it. They're going to get the best lawyers they can find and experts, and we'll see where it goes. And everything you just laid out, it's not an open, shut case. 
It's not an open and shut case. Like I said, it's 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 a little bit of a haul, and they're trying to put it together, and they're yeah. trying to put enough pressure on him. Maybe he will confess, and, mm -hmm. and we don't know. It's an interesting case because he's also he studied criminology mm -hmm. uh, in school, and he studied minds of serial killers. So it starts to make you think, you know, where where is this guy? You know, where's this guy going? But then the, the flip side of that is, is that evidence even going to get into into a trial? And that's going to be the big battle. So it remains to be seen what happens in this case. Okay. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate your opinion thank you. and joining us here. All right, we're going to take a quick break.